everyone this is Gail and I'm back with another polymer clay tutorial and today I'm going to be using the RJ Crafts um, maple leaf cutters let me get them situated here you can buy them individually or you can buy them in a set but um, I thought with fall being here, it would be a good time to make some fall leaves. And I'm, I thought I would try a couple of different techniques. Um, I think what I would like to do first is to add some color to my clay. And this is just scrap clay. It's mud. It uh, looks like it's a really nice shade of brown. But it's not, it's not so offensive that the back of the earrings would look bad in this color but I think I'm going to take some perfect pearls and just kind of play a little bit let me get a brush so I'm going to get some fall colors out and there's some bronze and I have to look in my little book to see what color this is. This looks like a brown. Here's a copper. Copper is always good. Um, I will add a little bit of green because you know it's not always... I think I'm just going to play. I'm just going to not even take them out of the container here. I'm just going to start brushing. So I think I will start with the... Actually, I'll put that on last. Let me start with the Forever Red. That's a nice red color. Dark red. And I'm going to put some on my brush and put it in the lid of the jar. And then I'm just going to start brushing. Maybe I better use my finger. Brush doesn't seem to hold enough, but I'm just going to start brushing and, you know, putting some color down. Mix it up a little bit. So there's the red. And I'll leave it out so I'll know what colors I used. This is the copper. So I'll do the same thing. I'll take some powder out and put it in my lid. If you stick your finger into the jar, you're going to end up with way too much. So I think I'll just add some copper in there. And just put it wherever, wherever you want it. I still had a little bit left on my brush because I didn't get any in the middle. And I want to make sure when I cut that I can get all of the different colors. All right, so there's the copper. And this is just one of those fun projects where you just get to do whatever you want. Now this is some kind of an orange. So let's see what this does because, you know, there's... We need to brighten this up a little bit. The copper is pretty bright. Let me go ahead and use my brush. Oh yeah, it almost comes out a goldish color. If trying to find places that doesn't have something on it and it's kind of hard. We're just going to make a palette of 
fall colors. So we've got the red and the gold, which are real, I mean the orange, which are big fall colors. Now I'm going to finish it up with some perfect gold. And I'm going to add this last because this is going to be, this is going to add more of a sparkle. The others have a metallic look, but this is going to have a sparkle to it. So I want to put this on last. And you can overlap your colors, you know, just get it so that it's a good mixture of colors. That's just about got it covered. Still a few little places that I could cover. Let me just look in here and see what else I might have that would... Oh, I did say I was going to try some of the green. But I don't think I'm going to try the forever green. I think I'm going to try this... Um, I forgot what it was called. Green something. I forgot what it's called. It's not on the jar, but it's a, it's a lighter green. It might, I'm a, I keep wanting to say verdigris, but I don't think it's verdigris. I should have gotten my little book out. I have a book that shows all of these colors on black and white clay. But the green just kind of adds some interest. It lets you know that everything is not quite dead yet. So there we go. I think that's pretty. And you can just play. You can use whatever you've got. Um, I like Perfect Pearls because Perfect Pearls has a resin in it that um, bonds with your clay when you bake it in the oven. So let me just... I'm going to leave my, this out in case I need to do something later. And I think I'm going to make earrings out of the smallest. And I'm going to put, where did I put it? I don't know why I haven't tried this before because I do it with regular cutters. I don't know why I wouldn't do it with the plastic cutters. But I'm going to put a sheet of plastic over here. Now this can be plastic wrap or whatever, but these are the plastic deli sheets. And I'm going to try cutting down with this and just wiggle it a little bit. I don't know how deep it's going to cut with the plastic on it. I don't think it went all the way through. So let me stand up and press down. Got to push a little bit harder when you're using the plastic. And I totally messed that one up. So let me go to another spot. See, I have a seam, so... Now I'm just going to push down. I'm not going to wiggle since it's... on plastic. And let me just see how this works. This one got totally messed up. This one didn't cut all the way through, but most of the way through, but it gave it a nice beveled edge. 
and we can refine those points in a minute. Okay, so now that I know that works, let me try over here. And just press down. And I'm going to go ahead and cut some other shapes. So I've got a pair of earrings. Now I could do the large leaf. Let me do that. I like these plastic cutters because they're flat on the top, so it's easy to push down. It doesn't hurt your fingers like some of the metal ones do. I just don't know. I think the plastic is keeping it from cutting all the way through, but that's okay. But I think I'll do that. And then maybe two of the third smallest. Sorry for the silence. It's kind of hard to press hard and talk at the same time. Okay, and then I'm going to put two of the smallest again over here. And I'm thinking necklace. Putting this in the middle and then what, these on each side and then the little one on each side of those. I think it would make a nice necklace. Sorry if you hear the noise. They're still working on the street out in front of my house. And there's a lot of trucks backing up down the road. And, of course, they've all got those backup beepers. Let me take this one out of the way before I, so I don't get them mixed up. Now let's see what we've got here. I ripped my big one. I was pulling in the wrong direction because I couldn't see what I was doing. So I may have to do that one over. I don't know if I can salvage that or not. See, I ripped the top off of this one. problem is I don't have any spaces left large enough to do another one so I'm going to have to blend this again and put my perfect pearls on again but I'll do that when I'm finished here so I'll have to redo that one but here's second earring and I'll clean these, these up in a minute I'll show you what how to do that and then this is for the necklace now normally I don't clean these up very much until I bake it but in this case, I'm going to go ahead and clean it up. I'm just going to take my needle tool and go around the outside. Just 
and it'll pull off all this extra clay that's in here. You can use a toothpick or any kind of tool. But you see, I just go around it. And the points you might need to refine a little bit with your fingers, but to get this excess clay off, just go around it with your needle tool or toothpick. But I think these are going to be so pretty. is the one I'm working on. So you don't need to watch me clean all of these. So I'm going to stop the camera and finish cleaning these up. And I'm also going to fix the big one. I'm going to make another little sheet um, similar to this. I'm glad I left my colors out and cut a large one and when I come back I'll have all of them cleaned up and ready to go. Okay I haven't finished with all of them yet but I did remake my big leaf and I've gone around it with the um, needle tool and now I'm just going to take my, my finger and go into these little crevices and the places where there isn't room for that I'm going to just take my little rubber tip tool and this finishes off it gets rid of all those little hang on pieces you know when you try to clean something up and then what you don't get it's you don't have to have it perfectly clean but what you don't get you can then sand off after it's baked but Anything that you've got that will get into these little crevices work fine. So there's that. Another thing is I'm going to go ahead, when I clean these up, I'm going to turn them over and I'm going to apply some Perfect Pearls on the back. I'm not sure which color. I may just go with the green, but uh, I don't think I'll do as many colors. But I am going to finish it off on the back so that it looks nice. So I will be back when that's done. Okay, I decided I was going to put copper on the back of these since it was a good mid-tone color. And I wanted to show you what I'm doing is patting the back. Because you don't want to rub if you're trying to cover it solid. Just pat it. And then turn it over and look at the other side. One good thing about this is now it's not going to stick to your fingers because you've got mica powder on all sides. But look at your pieces. See if you want to add any color to any of them. Um, I'm seeing some that I'd like to add a little bit of green to. Like this one didn't get much green. I'll just put a little across there. And just dab a couple. Doesn't matter. But just get some green. There you go. So now what I'm going to do, and let me tell you, I didn't tell you what I was doing before. This clay is rolled out to the number three thickness on my pasta machine. Number zero is my thickest. So number three is five playing cards thick, if you use, use the playing card method. But uh, you might notice that there's a few little specks left on here, and that's okay, because I, I don't want to ruin the shape. 
by trying to get everything off I will refine the edges when it comes out of the oven but I wanted to let you know if you are a little concerned about messing with the edges you can wait until it is baked and then come back and um, you know sand the rough places off but I don't think I'm even going to drill my holes yet because I'm not really sure how I'm going to do this. Um, but this is what I'm planning on doing. I'm going to have, say, two earrings. And then I'm going to have a necklace. Like this. And I don't have beads right now to go between them, so I probably won't be able to finish the necklace. I do not do a lot of jewelry, and I don't keep a lot of beads. So um, I'm, I apologize if I'm not able to finish, but I will get you to the point that at least we can, um, we can make the earrings, and I'll put the eyelets and everything in here. My question is whether I want to put two in it or one in the center. And that's why I decided I wasn't going to do it yet. Because I want to think about it a little bit. So I'm going to bake this in the oven for an hour at 275 degrees because this is Primo clay. And I will be back after it's out of the oven. Okay, I am back. And... I've got my pieces out of the oven, and I've already sanded them. I just wanted to show you there's so many different things you can use to sand. I have these little strips of sandpaper. It's like got a foam on the inside, and you can see here where I sanded around the edges with this one. Uh, there were some places that these wouldn't fit, so I sanded with an emery board. and Or you can get you know, sandpaper, sheets of sandpaper. There's all different kinds of sandpaper and things you can get. But I've already done all that, just to save you from having to watch. And I've picked out these two to make into earrings. And I'm just going to put these aside for a minute and work on the necklace part. And I still have the scrap clay left from um, when we did the, the leaves. And what I'm going to do is I've decided I'm going to make a bale for the back of these. Let me see if I can line these up the way I'm going to want them. But I'm going to make a bale, and I'm going to be putting them on this cord. So I need something that will leave a hole at least as big as that. And I found this little straw. It's a coffee stirrer type straw. And it is, I don't know if you can tell or not, but it's just a little bit larger than the black cord. So I'm going to use this, and I'm going to cut it into pieces and I need them to be long enough for these leaves and this one will be long enough for the back all right so what I'm going to do let me get those off of my plastic so I don't have to worry about those I'm going to do the biggest one first and I'm going to cut where there's still some mica powder left let me see I don't know. I'll, I'll just have to add some more mica powder after I'm finished because I don't think that's going to work. 
So I'm going to lay this down here, and I'm going to make this about this wide. And I'm getting that because this is going to lay on the back, and I don't want it to show, so this really is a little bit too wide. So let me just cut off maybe a quarter of an inch. See how that lays on there. Okay, and you can see it doesn't show in here and it doesn't show in here. So that will work good. So what I'm going to do is take the largest piece of straw that I have and I'm going to roll this clay over my straw and then maybe have it come down just a little ways. And I'm going to pinch this, go pinch the flat side to kind of thin it out a little bit. I'm just making sure it's still going to fit. I'm going to put it right there. So what I'm going to have to do, because this is, not only is it baked clay, but it's baked with Pearl X on it, which works as a repellent to anything, is I'm going to have to use some liquid clay. And I know I usually use... Um, the Kato, but I thought I, well, where did it go? I thought I would use the liquid Sculpey. Here's some translucent liquid Sculpey. And this is a rather big jar, so I don't know. I'm not going to need a whole lot. See, I just put a couple of drops on there, and I'm going to Smooth it with my finger. So there's a nice coating. Then I'm going to place this back where I want this to go. And make sure it's straight. And I can see I'm going to have to cut this off because it's going too far down into the little recesses there. And what I think I'm going to do is take a clay tool and just kind of flatten this a little bit just so we don't have a blunt edge. And the liquid, like, translucent liquid Sculpey is underneath it. And just kind of smooth it out a little bit, just to, just to make it smooth. You don't want it to be too bad. And I'm going to take my paper towel and just wipe it off. And then I'm going to take the copper powder that I put on the back. Now that's the red. That red looks so much like copper. I, it's, I picked it up a couple times and almost used it. Where did my copper go? Should be right here on top. Here it is. Look at the difference. You can hardly see the difference until you put them together. But I'm going to take this and dab it on the closure, this or the bale, I guess you could call it. Just so it blends in and it's not so obvious that it's added. And it slipped down a little bit. So 
So I'm going to bake this again. Let me just make sure that this copper covers all of it. Let me look at it from the front. The only thing I see is the straw, but it doesn't look straight from the front. So let me turn it a little bit. Make sure you do all this before you put it in the oven. And then I'm going to bake this again. And I'm going to do the same thing to the other pieces that um, go with this necklace. Um, would have done them all at one time, but I don't want to keep you here all day. So I'm going to go ahead and put them on the other pieces, just like this, and then bake it. And then I'm going to be back, and we will put some resin on them and put them on our necklace and see how they look. So I'll be back. Okay, while the other parts are in the oven, I thought I would go ahead and get started on the earrings and I, I keep this little piece of foam it was some packing material that came in something that I ordered but I keep this because it's a good firm foam but yet it gives a little bit there's a little bit of give and I have these earrings these ear wires and they're by Beetalon I probably got these either at Michael's or Joann's one of the two but I really like the way these look and I think having that little piece of silver coming down across the top will give this some really interesting you know it'll help it look nice so I'm going to go ahead and drill a hole and I'm going to find my center which is about there And I'm not real good at this. I probably ought to put this on here to line it up. Line up the point and the center. If I can grab hold of this. And just start a little hole. And just use my hand vise to drill the hole. And can you see all the clay that's coming up? Let me come in really close. Can you see all this clay that's coming up from the drill bit? All this has come up. As you drill, the clay will come up. I don't think there's any way I can get you to see it. But that's gone all the way through. No, it hasn't gone all the way through. All right, I thought it was in the foam. So I'll just continue to drill. I can't get my hands out of the way so you can see what's happening. Maybe if I tilt it a little bit. But can you see the clay coming up out of the hole? And now it's gone through. And just make sure your hole is nice and clean. So I'll do the same thing here. I'll line this up. And find my center. Start my hole. I don't know if I can tilt this or not. I'll try so you can see what's going on. But as I start to drill, little pieces of clay start coming up the, the drill. Don't press hard. You don't want to compromise your piece. 
but there so now I've got two nice clean holes I am going to be putting resin on these so I really can't go any further with these until I finish with the resin I'll be back when the other pieces come out of the oven okay these are out of the oven and I'm going to pull the straws out so you just give it a little twist and you'll hear it snap loose from the clay Okay, now I'm going to string them on this cord just to see how it's going to look. Whoops. Sorry about that. Dropped it on the floor just kind of norm for me. I'm beginning to get very clumsy sometimes. And this was just the right size for these beads. Those, the straw was just perfect. Now I may need to make some beads to put in between We'll see how this does. But that's kind of what I'm shooting for. Is a necklace like this. I wonder if these slide together and slightly overlap how that will look. I kind of like that. Kind of overlapping with so without putting beads. You could have them overlap like this. Yeah, I think I like that. So the next step is going to be to put resin on them. Let me pull these off one at a time so I don't mess them up. And I think with the resin you'll see the colors in the mica a little bit better. So let me get my resin out. I'll pour just a little bit and on this one I will use the brush that came with the resin it's a little big but I think for the larger piece it would work better so let me pour some resin into my cup and I just start with a little bit. I can always add more. And I'll start with the large one. And I think I'm going to put the resin on the front and the back. But I'm going to put it on the front first. And I will probably put several coats of resin on here because I really want this to be shiny. Now you could have put, if you wanted to, I would have, I probably should have and didn't think about it, but you might want to put um, 
veins in this before you bake it, but look how the colors pop when you put the resin on it. But I'm going to not waste your time watching me. You, you've seen me do the resin before, and you just brush it on. Let it sit for a minute. It's usually thin enough that there's it's not long and it's not thick enough to create any bubbles. But the reason I wanted to do the front first is this back piece is really nice to help hold hold the uh, beads in place. So I'm not going to make you watch all of this. I'm going to coat the rest of these on the front. Then I'm going to put them under the UV light. And then I'm going to coat the back. So especially for the earrings, the backs and the fronts will look the same. So I will be back once all that's done. Okay, here they are after one coat. And I think in looking at them, I probably will add one more little thin coat. Um, mainly because I think some of the resin came through. This one has a little bubble. I'll try to cover up that bubble. This one looks good. But I think this is, gives you an idea Okay, I have put these on here on the necklace cord. Let me get some white paper so you can back so I, you can see what I'm doing. I think the grid kind of interferes and I don't want to use this card stock. There. I'm going to hold on to these little pieces of tubing or whatever you want to call it, straws, because I might be able to use those. And I have a little place in here where I keep those kind of things. So hopefully next time I'll be able to... Uh, find them or remember that I've got them and these I'm going to just if you look at these they have this little hoop right here and it's not attached at the top so what you want to do is bend that out you don't want to bend it out you just want to bend it to the side and let's see it wants to hang this way so I'll put it in this way. And hopefully I allowed enough room for this to hang. And then I'll just bend this up. So there's one earring. And I'll do the same on the other one. Let's see, I want it to hang this way. So I need to go in from the front. have to finagle this earpiece there and then fold this back up I 
actually that got bent out a little bit by mistake, but I can push that back in. And there is the earrings and necklace using the fall the maple leaves. This is RJ Crafts Cutter Set number 106. And you can get these individually or you can get them when I say individually by size or you can <clears throat> excuse me get the entire set. <clears throat> so I hope you like this. I know I did. Um, I wish I had these in copper or bronze. I think that would be even prettier. But unfortunately, all I wear is silver, so that's kind of what I have here. So, hope you like that. Let me give you a close-up. Let's see. You can see all the shine from the resin and the light shining on it. But come back again for another tutorial from RJ Crafts. And I'll leave all the links below for any, any of the products that I used here. Thanks. Bye-bye.